Hi everybody, I know it's been a really long time since I've made a C++ video. Um, and the reason I haven't been making them is just because um, school started a couple weeks ago and I've been pretty busy and I mean, I mean you might say you've had time to make Let's Plays, haven't you? Well yeah, I have. Because Let's Plays, I push record and play a video game for 10-11 minutes. Um, these can take much more work than they might appear because, I mean, I have to first decide what I'm going to talk about and then the video itself almost always takes more than one take and uh, sometimes I have to do some research before I actually make the video to make sure I explain everything correctly and so, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work, these videos, I mean, well, it's not a lot, but I mean, they're fun to make, but they're also, they require work and, um, the Let's Plays don't require as much work, which are still fun to make. So, I mean, on a school night, if I'm trying to decide between making a Let's Play, doing homework, or sleeping, you know, and making one of these videos, obviously making one of these videos is going to be at the bottom of the list. So, that's kind of why I haven't been making these, but, um, here's one for you today. Uh, we're going to be talking about something called Recursion. It looks like that. It derives from to recurse. Um, it's kind of hard to explain, so I'll do an example. I'm going to make a function and call it countdown from. And I want what I want this to do is I want to call this function and I want it to go 10, or I want to call it with any number I want. Let's say I call it with 10. I want to go 10, 9, 8, blah, 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 until it gets to 1, and then it should finish up. That's all the function should do. Could we do this with a for loop? Yes, we could. But we're not going to do. We're not going to do it like that. We're going to do it using recursion. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to see out n, and then that ellipsis. And then I'm going to have an if statement. If n is greater than 1, or greater than 0, I mean, then will recall countdown 1 with n minus 1, or countdown from n minus 1. Now try to wrap your head around what's going on here while I add this into main and uh, save and compile. If you think about it, I'm sure you can figure it out, but I'll tell you what's going on in just a second. Oops. Countdown from 10. Ha! Ah. Okay. There, we got the compile up. Here we go. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Oops. I didn't actually want it to say 0, so I guess we want this to be 1. So let's recompile and run. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So there we go. Now let's walk through what's going on here. And let's actually make this 5, so it's a little bit easier to think about. And then we can just extrapolate. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's happening here? First we call the function with the number 5, from main. Then the program goes here, and C outs with n equals 5, 5. Now if 5 is greater than 1, which it is, then it calls this function again with n minus 1, which is 4. So now the program is going to jump from here straight up to here, and with n equals 4. It's going to see out 4. Is 4 greater than 1? Yes. It'll jump from here to here with n equals 3. Same. Jump to n equals 2, n equals 1, and it'll see out 1. And then after it see outs 1, it says, is 1 greater than 1? No, it's not. Thanks for asking. And then it doesn't do anything and the program countdown, or the function countdown from with n equals 1 closes. Now then we come back to here uh, with it, which is the program uh, countdown from with n equals 2, or the function with n equals 2. So now that finishes up the if and then finishes up the function, which returns the execution to with n equals 3. That goes again and again until it returns execution with n equals 5. Then that finishes up, and eventually it returns execution to main, and main finishes up. So that's what happens here. 
it can be very difficult to wrap your head around what's going on. And for that reason, look, I have a diagram. Um, I'm using an online editor here. It's Pixlr or something like that, something pretty cool. Um, it lets you basically make images. It's a free service, and it's a graphical online editor. So here's main. Now main is going to call countdown from with some number. In this case, 5. So let's use another color. So it'll go from there to this countdown from 5. Now after it does that, well, I should probably be using some keystrokes to make this easier, but whatever. After Now countdown from 5 is going to call this again. And now that's going to call uh or no yeah from countdown from this is going to call with n equals 4 now then that's going to go do that's going to go from countdown equals countdown with n equals 4 back up to countdown from that'll call 3 which will go back up 2 will go back up 1 is the only one that's not going to be calling itself or its own function so now if we uh, so when uh, 4 calls this it's going to be calling 3 when 3 calls this it's going to be calling 2 man this is kind of hard to understand with all these lines but I hope I've kind of made the point here that eventually countdown from 1 is not going to call itself and then the execution will go in reverse order and it, all of these will finish up and eventually will return back to main where main will end and which is that so that's how the program works it's really hard to understand recursion even in this kind of simple example, I can under, I, I really understand that it can be really difficult to wrap your head around. So, um, is recursion necessary for this example? Of course not. Like I said, this could easily have been written with a for loop, and it would probably even have been easier than what we're doing here. Um, so, uh... You're, you'll definitely run across recursion because sometimes it is the best option. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I have used it a few times in my actual, uh, you know, in some actual programming that I've done. I have used it a bit, um, but almost always there's a solution to it that doesn't involve recursion. So, just something to keep in mind. That's pretty much all I'm gonna talk about today. Uh, I can't tell you much more about recursion than what I've told you here. If you still don't understand, maybe try watching the video again, uh, but I can't really tell you any more about it to help you understand. Uh, if you don't understand, just try to keep thinking about it, um, and eventually I think it'll click. So, it can be kind of mind-bending, but you'll get it eventually, I'm sure. Alright, so thanks for watching, guys, um, and I'll see you next time.